everybody and welcome to this week's video. Now, this week, I'm, it's a little bit different actually. I'm, I'm in a similar location to normal. I've not gone far from home, but it's somewhere I've never been before. So I'm up in the uh, old quarry that uh, is quite near my house, the gravel quarry, and you'll have seen that on the, featured on a lot of my videos, um, especially during lockdown. But this is an, actually a section I've never been into before. Sort of in the centre of the quarry, there's a, quite a low section of land next to one of the gravel pits, or the old gravel pits that's now a lake. And it's just a complete tangle of um, willow trees that's been here for a long, long time. And if you look behind me, you probably see it looks a little bit like an old mangrove swamp or something. And to be fair, it smells like one as well. But the reason I've come down here is that I've never actually been to this section before. And I want to, there's actually a couple of, or there have been in previous years, a couple of great crested grebes on this lake. Um, and I was looking for a place to try and sort of get in quite tight to the, the water uh, and get some images and some film, some footage. Which brings me on actually to this week's video. Now, over the past couple of years, um, and especially since I started this YouTube channel, I found myself doing far more footage uh, of wildlife than I have still, uh, to be honest. And that's not only for my YouTube channel, but also um, for things like stock libraries require a lot of footage and it's, it's in quite high demand. So I've got myself a setup to do the footage, and this video, in a way, is I hope it's going to be useful to people who are starting out doing wildlife footage but also um, it's quite selfish in a way because I'm quite new to this. I've got myself a setup which works for me uh, quite reasonably but I want to see actually if there's anything else I can do to tweak it to make it better and you know we'll get on to that later so anything that you know people have an idea about as regards techniques I can use or bits of kit that might help please stick them in the comments below. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see if there's any way that I can improve the way that I'm taking my footage uh, and hopefully it will be useful to people who are just starting out doing wildlife footage as well. So let's crack on with it and I'll show you the kit I'm using. Right, so we'll look at some of the simple stuff first and obviously if you've been watching my videos a lot recently you'll know that I use the Sony a6400 as my main camera. Really quite happy with this. This will shoot um, it shoots 4K actually, but I never use it for 4K. I always, I'm quite happy with 1080p. Um, but what I do really like about this is it'll shoot 120 frames a second, which means I can get that nice slow motion footage. Um, and I use that quite a lot. Um, so th this really does a good job for me. Um, I can't think of anything I'd change on it, only perhaps to get an even faster frame rate. So perhaps 200, I don't know if anything does 200 frames. Uh, but if it did, then that would allow me to slow the footage even more. Uh, probably that's something that will come with these cameras in the future. Um, but anyway, that's that's the camera. Not really a lot to say about it. Very happy with it. As you'll also know, it's now paired with this um, Sony 200-600 lens. Not shot a lot of footage with this yet. The stuff that I have done I've been very happy with. Um, I mean, I think I've gone into before the... the sort of little idiosyncrasies this has got that perhaps if they do a version 2 they might look at it and, and change the main one is there's no um, there's no zoom lock on this at all so it's quite easy to zoom in and out from um, 200 mil to 600 mil and I especially found that a problem when using a bean bag if you turn in the, the camera it's not a problem on here but if you turn in the camera on a bean bag that friction can actually turn this ring and you can find yourself you're not at 600 mil anymore you know so it's, it's a little niggle something that probably quite easily and quite cheaply could have been sorted out but I'm quite happy with this lens as well um, I, what you might notice I've done is this um, neoprene cover I've got I'm such a cheapskate that this is the one off the Tamron 150-600 G2 I had and I just found that a lot of the bits actually fit this lens so slide that back a little bit there you'll see it's um yeah and i don't tend to like it on this top section anyway because that's where all my controls are and i want to be able to get to those quickly and i've found in the past that these bits of neoprene slide around and you know there's a gap for your buttons but then the buttons are covered up because this is slipped around so i prefer not to have it on at all i really just use this for, for protection of the lens more than anything else uh, so that's the lens and the camera 
Now then, the important bit, or the bit that I do struggle with, I love it but I hate it, it's a love-hate relationship definitely, um, and that's the tripod. Now the tripod I've got is an iPhone, uh, it's an iFootage Gazelle. Um, it's a brilliant tripod, I love it, but it's so heavy. The reason I love it is, A, it's sturdy, which probably is why it's quite heavy, but it's one of these tripods that's got this bowl configuration. Now what that means is, now, until you've used it actually, you don't really realise how useful it is. Let me put it that way. It's sort of one of those things that, until you've got it, you don't, you don't think you need it, but when you've got it, you don't really want to be without it. And I have tried, believe you me, I've tried. I've tried a Vanguard tripod that's um, carbon fibre to try and get the weight down with a different head on it, and I, it just, it's just not this. Um, so anyway, how this works, you basically, if you can have either the camera on or off, but if you tip your camera forward, basically when you're doing footage, and this is useful if you're doing landscape photography or anything else, you need to level your tripod legs. Now with a conventional tripod, what you'll have to do is hutch each leg individually up and down until your spirit level, which you've got here, is in the middle. With this, what you do is, you just loosen that, and basically that pivots on a bowl, get your dot in the middle, bang, that's level, you're ready to shoot. Now that is so much easier than trying to eat, uh, level each individual leg. Again, I use this for landscape photography as well, because if you're doing things like panoramics where you're taking a number of shots, if you don't get your tripod legs level, even though you've got a level on your camera, it doesn't matter. You're still going to get that waving. So I absolutely love this tripod. The mistake I made with it is they do a carbon fibre version and I bought the aluminium. If I change anything, unless anybody's got any other ideas, um, it would be this for a carbon fibre version. That's mated with a Manfrotto and I think it's an MVH 500 fluid head. Now this does come with a, a detachable handle so that you can you know, work it like this, but I prefer actually to, because on this A6400, I don't have to film through the screen at the back, I can film through the viewfinder. I always prefer to film through the viewfinder, so I'll find myself, you know, just doing that and, and basically controlling the up and down movement, so you just loosen that off, loosen that off, and then I've basically got full control in a fluid motion. Completely smooth, absolutely fantastic. Um, again, one bugbear I've got with this, it's brilliant, I've tried to use other things, couldn't find anything that did the same job anywhere near as well as this does. But I just get the feeling again that manufacturers may have missed a little bit of a trick, unless anybody can tell me there's a lighter version of this or something similar from a different manufacturer. But it, it's bulky and presumably it needs to be, I have a certain amount of bulk to it because it's a fluid head. but. I don't know, it just, weight-wise, it just seems a bit over-engineered as if, you know, we're moving on to, you know, certainly I am and a lot of other people are mirrorless cameras and lighter zoom lenses rather than the big um, prime 600 mils or whatever. You know, this is so much more versatile for me. Once I'm in this position, if things get further away or closer, I can just zoom in or out. I'm not having to change lenses or move physically closer or further away. So yeah, I mean, this does everything, but it's, it's such a light package. This just seems quite over-engineered. So that's the big thing for me, equipment-wise, is am I missing something somewhere? So yeah, any comments on that, please stick them in the comments below. Right, now when I'm filming wildlife, I sometimes like to try and get um, the audio as well. Obviously here, that doesn't happen a lot because I've got the sound of the no noisy road which would sound awful but if I'm in a really quiet place and you might be able to hear there's a, a bird above me now um, twittering away but if I'm say in a woodland away from um, cars and traffic and I've just got natural sound it's quite nice to be able to record that audio at the minute I'm using um, a little road um, video mic uh, the micro one, the really small one, which is actually recording this audio now. Again, I would like advice on this. What 
I don't really want to go down the road of the parabolic sort of thing, but are there any really good um, shotgun mics that, you know, if I point it in the direction that I want of a particular animal, animal or bird, it'll really pick up the, the sound of that animal or bird well uh, at a reasonable distance. As I say, I, that, that's quite new to me, but it's something that I would like to add on to my videos on occasion if I can in the right situation. The only other real thing that I'm going to be adding to this kit is a 95mm uh, um, six stop neutral density filter. Um, that'll tie in with the technique bit in a minute, so I'll come on to that later. And that is really all my video kit at the minute. Um, not sure, as I say, if I'm doing it right. You know, I seem to get reasonable results, but obviously, anybody's got any ideas for anything different that I can do, please put them in the comments below. Right, so technique wise, well, as you'll probably have seen from a lot of my recent videos, I really do enjoy doing slow motion footage. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, I think you don't really appreciate the animal as much when it's at full speed, particularly birds. Um, you know, they're so quick in their movements that actually to slow them down, often I forget that I'm watching them in slow motion because they're still really quick. But you do get an opportunity to, you know, see things. And I think if you see from the field fair footage that I saw, you can actually see the tongue of the bird and stuff at, at certain times. And, you know, the snow coming down, slowed down and bouncing actually off the bird worked really well. So I do like using slow motion. So I'm shooting at 120 frames a second. Now the ruling is, as I understand it, and the one that I use is that if, if you're shooting at 120 frames a second, then your um, shutter speed needs to be double that. So basically what I'd need to shoot on this is at 250th of a second. So that's, you know, that's reasonably fast uh, but if you've got a, a bright day, the problem that you have is that um, you can put your ISO all the way down to 100 and your camera still wants to shoot at a thousandth of a second. Now the problem you've got with that is, and I can't really explain it other than when you film something at um, 250th of a second or if, you, if you're shooting at 30 frames a second then you'd shoot at one, uh, 160th of a second shutter speed what you get is things like when you wave so if you wave any movement like that with your eyes there's a natural motion blur that you see but if you do it and shoot at a thousandth of a second you don't actually get any blur it, it looks unnatural because it, it you can see it all the way there's no natural blur to the hand that you see with your eyes if you see what I mean so that transfers when you're doing wildlife it just looks slightly odd so that's the ruling is that if you're you know if you're shooting like on this camera where I shoot 120 frames a second my shutter speed needs to be 250 250th of a second and, and conversely if I'm shooting normal footage which on here is 30 frames a second I need to shoot the shutter at 160th of a second so I'm always shooting in manual with this and, and just making sure those settings are completely right for, for the you know situation that I'm shooting. What I also do is use manual focus. Um, probably 90% of the time I use manual focus, just simply because I think with autofocus, especially if you're shooting something that's maybe in bushes or in quite a busy environment, the, the the focus can shift onto the branches or something or whatever around it. Um, and that's absolutely awful to try and if you're trying to watch that on on screen when it just goes in and out of focus it looks awful one other advantage of shooting um slow motion is you can imagine for a lot of small birds you may get three four lucky if you get five seconds of that bird out in the open decent footage that's really not a lot to put into a video however if you've used it, uh, if you've done it 120 frames a second, that five seconds can become 15 seconds or 20 seconds, which again makes it a, then a useful clip rather than by the time you put it on screen and somebody's seen, oh, but it's gone, it's finished. So again, that's another useful tip for you. Also, as well, I find is if you do have any movements where you've moved or knocked the camera or you're not quite as smooth as you want it to be, 
it's sort of smooth as that out it's more of a gradual move rather than a jerky move which you would have if you were shooting at normal speed six stop filter as I said was on the way the reason I've got that is is basically for really sunny days when um, I can't get down to that slow shutter speed so that means that I can darken the whole thing with the uh, with the filter and it'll allow me to get down to that 250th of a second or you know that uh, 60th of a second if I'm shooting normal footage without that you know you've got that strange look to your footage because you're going to be shooting at a thousandth of a second or whatever and it just doesn't look right once you've seen the two side by side now there's loads of videos on YouTube that look into that and show you the examples of the footage and you'll see exactly what that means um, and it, yeah it just looks odd once you've seen it you don't really want to be sort of doing it that way so that's why the filters come in another reason as well is that what you tend to do is if you're trying to get down to that 250th of a second obviously you've got two ways of doing it you can uh, put your ISO right down to 100 and then you start looking at your um, aperture so the only way to let less light in then is to close down the aperture so you start getting up to f11 f13 f16 now obviously from doing stills photography one of the things you try to do is get enough depth of field to keep your animal or bird in focus the eye and the beak or whatever the bits that you want um, but you want the background out of focus so it concentrates you know your attention on the bird well you're doing the exact opposite there if you're shooting at f13 or f16 you're bringing more and more of it into focus which again is probably not what you want to do so that's where that six stop filter should help um, so we'll see anyway that may be something that you notice on my footage in future um, hopefully we'll get a helping hand from that and lastly really is audio and this is where I struggle the most because as I say I only I use this Rode video mic on occasions I know you can put sand on after I mean to be honest I was in the woods the other day and I've got um, muntjac deer barking I've got woodpeckers drumming I've got all the small birds calling I've got pheasants calling um, and it was just fantastic and I just thought there must be some way of recording this and you know when you're doing um, clips of a particular animal so I might have been taking just pictures of the of, of the woodpecker but I could have had the woodpecker drumming sounds as well as all that cacophony and noise around it, those natural sounds which sounded fantastic. Um, hopefully you can hear that crow as well in the background. So yeah, any recommendations for a shotgun mic that's really good at capturing audio um, for sort of, not so much for my voice, I'm quite happy with this Rode video mic, but for mounting on top of here or to the side of this just to get some cracking audio for when I want to use it with my clips would be fantastic again stick it in the comments below and that is it for this short video this week I hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into how I shoot my footage and for any beginners out there who are, are looking at doing some footage it actually does bring another dimension to um, you know that the, the work that you're doing I mean I know a lot of people shoot stuff on the mobile phones these days but there is it's a whole new science to me this and it's, it's if you're technically minded and like your wildlife photography and then this is just really the next step and it just it really does um, again add something to the YouTube videos but it's also just so nice to watch when you get it all right so hopefully you've enjoyed it um, please leave comments below on any uh, bits of kit that you think might be useful or ways that I can improve the stuff that I'm doing and uh, yeah if you've not subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe i will see you next week for another video and uh, hopefully we'll be out of lockdown and we can go and do something exotic anyway cheers see you next week